So welcome everybody to what I think is the first formal interface between the whole music ecology and our prospective representatives and city government. Um, I'm Mara McLaughlin. I'm executive director of Music Portland and we are the grassroots nonprofit trade organization that represents the entire music ecology here in Portland. Um, it's all music businesses, all venues, all performing and recording artists, studios, labels, bookers. We've got hundreds of music businesses here in this city. I'm gonna make a brief statement to give some context for the audience and to frame our aspirations for this event. Um, Portland's for-profit music industry has been an economic and cultural juggernaut for years. It delivers enormous benefits to our city. With its fiercely DIY culture and independent spirit, um, for all of this time it's existed, there has been no explicit support from city government. And partly this is because there's been no available intelligence about the industry as a whole to inform policy decisions. So collecting this data has been a primary mission of Music Portland since 2018. Um, many people are surprised to learn that our local music industry generates more than a billion dollars in direct revenue each year from ticket sales, instrument and gear manufacturing, distribution, music production, record labels, and more. Combine that with the exponentially greater indirect revenue, where $12 on average is paid for drinks and food for every $1 spent on a ticket. And finally, consider the confirmed influence that our music scene has as an economic multiplier on music tourism and corporate recruitment. There are an estimated 40,000 Portlanders who make some or all of their income as in professional music activities. Um, so live performance is the linchpin of this economy. In the current crisis, local venues were the first to shut down and they're gonna be the last to reopen. Without performance income, musicians can't pay for goods and services provided by the more than 700 businesses that are located here. Um, from a civic perspective, venues are like the Grange Halls of our Oregon past. They provide critical community gathering spaces to support nonprofits and uh, personal events and a multitude of other non-musical community activities. If the venues are not sustained, the path for the industry and our city as a whole is bleak. So successful music cities take three specific things. One, industry solidarity and leadership. Two, engaged fan base and three, supportive city government. So we're lucky as a city to have multiple music organizations uniting and championing different aspects of our industry. Music Portland works closely and collaboratively with the Musicians Union, with the Independent Venue Coalition, with the Oregon Media Production Alliance and others. As for fans, our nearly 1,200 promoted live music shows every month um, exist because we have the audiences keep coming. We've been ranked by Bands in Town as the second most engaged fan base in the country. And Portlanders have a limitless capacity for information and stories about our local music scene. We've got five independent radio stations that heavily feature local music. We've got a quarterly full color print magazine solely about local music and musicians in Vortex Magazine. Our music industry powers our free press. Willie Week and Mercury are mostly supported by music promotions that are not, and not coincidentally, we're critically wounded when the venues closed. So we've got industry leadership, we've got residents and local employers who are deeply committed to our local music scene. And what the moment now demands is an integrated strategic leadership from City Hall. What will Portland look like if we allow our music culture to fade away? So even before the shutdown, the music industry was already challenged by Portland's rapid growth and rising prices and residential infill um, and while we work co cooperatively with RAC, that organization was designed to support nonprofit arts and music economies, and they have neither the capacity nor the structure to effectively serve the commercial music industry. The simple fact is that Portland's music industry has earned its own seat at the city's table, not as an afterthought sort of combined in with arts and culture. It's different. It's a commercial production art that's more like film than it is like theater or dance. So we're looking for leadership that will partner with the industry to craft new and creative ways to reinvent us into a sustainable music city. 
Of course, there are gonna be hard choices and priorities competing for attention and resources in the year to come. Leadership in the next term will be measured by what's left of Portland when the crisis is over. What makes Portland Portland? The mountain is still gonna be there, but our music culture will not survive without explicit strategy and investment. So today, we hope to hear from each candidate about their curiosity, their creativity, and their commitment to this large and complex music ecology. We are absolutely grateful for your participation as we throw a whole new industry to consider into complicated times. But for the music professionals that are listening, we hope that from this event and the other candidate submissions we'll be posting, um, that you make informed election choices that will define our city government going forward. Your vote on May 19th will directly impact your long-term viability as a music professional in Portland. This is important. And as much as we're asking of the candidates, we're asking even more from the music community to get involved, be part of the democratic process and help us rebuild our city. And now it's time for y'all to face the music.